ways you can stay connected with us here at NFC Derby. If you're currently watching us on our Facebook page, if you haven't already, you can scroll up and click on the like button. If you are over on our YouTube channel, you can scroll down and click on the subscribe button. And to be notified of when we post, you can click on the little red bell. You can also visit our website at www.anfc.org.uk. If you'd like to send us an email, you can do so at admin at anfc.org.uk. If you'd like to send us a prayer request, you can email that to I need prayer at nfc.org.uk.
want to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ this morning. We're worthy of all the praise and all the worship. You know, God is so good. The Bible tells us that, you know, he said he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. You know, it also lets us know that he that has started the good work in me and you will complete it. You know, we do go through times of hard times and we go through trouble. But you know something, the God of heaven is faithful. We go through things that, you know, sometimes come to destroy us. But we know that the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the living God will lift up a standard. And we thank God for his mercy. We thank God for his grace. It reminds me just when Paul, you know, had this problem with that we had the thorn inside the flesh and he sought the Lord three times. You know, and God turns around and says, my grace is sufficient. And I want to let you know that God's grace is sufficient. That his strength is made perfect in your weakness. You know, and I love what the, the writer said, that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens me and you. Because it's not by might, nor by power, but by his Holy Spirit. And we thank God for his very presence this morning. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand side, there are pleasures forevermore. And we can call upon God because he said, call and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things. And we know the Bible tells us that, amen, that the just shall live by faith. And the Bible said that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. And this morning, I want to build your faith by the word of God. I want to encourage you. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. And I want you to be sharp in your spirit, sharp in your mind, sharp in every aspect of your life. Because God wants me and you to prosper in every single area of our life. You know, the Bible lets us know that he delights. And I keep on using that word most weeks, that he delights in the prosperity of his people. Think about it. God delights. He gets satisfaction when he sees his people, amen, prospering. And I'm not talking about just financial. I'm talking about when you prosper uh, 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 in your spirit life. And when that relationship with God is so tight, because the Bible lets us know that the hour cometh when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and truth, because he seeketh such. He wants you, amen, me and you, to worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, before we go into the Word, I just want to let you know, Pastor Sandra and the ministry team, they send their love, they're always praying, like I said, believing God that you will be established in this season and that the God of heaven will give you the very desires of your heart. Well, we're going to go into the word this morning. Well, this is the conclusion of what I've been talking about from the beginning of the year about restoration, recovery that God wants me and you not to live beneath our potential, but live according to the place where it's designed for me and you. Now the Bible tells us that, watch this, that we are a chosen generation, a royal priest, priesthood, a peculiar kind of people that, you know, that we should show forth the praises of our God. The Bible also lets us know that we are a lively stone building up a spiritual house and God has purpose for me and you to walk in victory. But we know that life brings us certain problems, brings us certain challenges. We know over the last um, um, 18 months, uh, you know, we've had, you know, COVID that has brought a devastation. People have lost loved ones and our hearts go out to them. People have lost jobs. It's been very difficult. People have, have had breakdowns and people have just been traumatized by what's happened. Uh, but you know something, we can lift up our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help. And you know, so over the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about Elijah, this man of God that, you know, God used him, you know, that he, he had a zealousness for God and how he, uh, on Mount Carmel, he, 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 he challenged the, the prophets of Baal and how, you know, he laid the sacrifice down and God answered by 
fire. And, and, and you know, we see that also that he prophesied before that there'll be no rain. And we saw that, you know, the hand of God was upon his life, you know, but he experienced something that many people go through where we are disheartened in heart, where we, you know, we're at that place where we just feel like running away from our situations because situations do come and they come to try us. But one of the things that I want to let you know this morning, the Bible says, the Bible makes it clear when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up a standard. And I personally believe that God is raising the standard inside your life and my life and saying, you know what, I want you to discover that I am the God that is for you. Amen. I am the God that come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And I want you to come to the place of recovery and restoration being complete inside him. Amen. The Bible tells us that in him we live and move and have our being. Watch this. And if God is for us, then who can be against you? We can see how Elijah was used by God. But then when he heard something, he heard that Jezebel was after his life and he was fearful. And because of what was happening and how the children of Israel, how they, they, they tore down the altars of God and how they broke the covenant and they began to worship the false uh, 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 God of Baal. And, 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 and how he's now running for his life because of fear and disappointment to the place now he wants his life to be taken by God and he finds himself under that juniper tree resting because he was also physically tired and they needed strength and we know that and God sent the angel and now they they made him uh, uh, baked him a cake or, or and, and made him heat and said you've got to heat because the journey is going to be long 40 days and 40 nights is on the move he moves from uh, the juniper tree and finds himself in a cave uh guess what it, it, it is it, it's physical circumstances have changed but internally he was still battling internally he still was at that place of being defeated and sometimes life brings certain things to me and you and we are deflated and we think it's over. But I want to let you know that God has not finished with you yet. That God has a purpose for me and for you as is believers and we see watch this how you know God you know it, it, God knows exactly where he is he's inside the cave and God says you know what I'm gonna pass by I'm gonna show you something I'm gonna pass by uh, and, and the Bible lets us know that you know that there was there was there, there was a there was the wind came and the, 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 the breaking of the rocks and then there was the earthquake and then there was the the fire and 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 the, and the bible lets us know that he recognizes that god was not in any of that he wasn't in the earth he wasn't in the wind he wasn't in the earthquake he wasn't in the fire but a, a small distilled voice and he recognized that it was the voice of God. Now the voice of God made the difference because you've got to remember he's running away from Jezebel. He's running away from his circumstances. He's running away because he probably thought, you know, his ministry had not done well because, you know, uh, you know, I've demonstrated the power of God and yet still the, the, the children of God uh, have turned their backs on God and so he would have been in a bad place but that voice, when he heard that voice the bible tells us that he takes his mantle and he covers his face uh, and he covers his face because was the tradition watch this when uh, um that you could not see God. Uh, if you did, if you saw him, any man saw him, that they would die. So he recognizes the voice of God. And that voice, amen, caused him, watch this, to be empowered, amen, and, and return back because God then recommissions him back to his purpose. He said, go back. And we see that as he goes back, he even ends up prophesying to, to Hayab, he ends up prophesying uh, uh, to Jezebel. But God tells him to go 
back and, and, and to anoint. He's got some anointing uh, to do. He's got he's got some anointing to do. There's there's somebody watch this that God uh, 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 going to anoint uh, uh, a new young prophet uh, uh, in in his place uh, uh, because watch this because God was concerned about the next generation. So you see, I personally believe that that's why God hasn't finished with me and you yet because I personally believe that me and you as individuals and the church at large has to affect or leave something upon the next generation. Now, now the Bible tells us, you know, when he calls uh, the young man, Elijah, uh, 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 you know, he places his mantle on his shoulders and, and he, he understood what that meant. He understood that that was a call uh, from God. There was something that was placed upon him. And, and, and this is what I want to let us uh, ask me and you the question. Are you in the place where God wants you to be? Because you see, there's something that you are carrying that you have to place upon somebody, place upon the next generation. Because you see, I personally believe that 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 um, we have to leave a legacy um, to the next generation. You know, I have two sons, and you know, I thank God for them. You know, and I'm not bragging, but they're doing well in life. They're achieving. They're doing better than that, what I was doing at their age. You see, and, and I'm grateful for that. I, so you see, because there's a desire inside me to see the next generation do better one, than what I'm doing. There's a desire inside me for the next generation to come and take what I call the mantle and begin to run with it and begin to do great and mighty exploits in their generation. Watch this. So it's so important uh, that we begin to what I call uh, have something that, that we leave the next generation. Now, I, I want us to turn our Bibles um, this morning just um, briefly to the book of Psalms 127 verse Three and seven, and he goes. Lo, the children are our heritage of the Lord's, and the fruits of the womb is His reward. As the arrows are in the hands of a mighty man, so are the children of thy youth. Talking that you know, uh, uh, the arrow talks about you know power, demonstration, and, and and I personally believe that the church should be preparing what I call the next generation. We should be doing something and this is what Elijah did he, he, he went back and he, he found the man that the, the young boy that the, the young uh, um, new prophet that would take his place and, and, and he places something on him and, and we know that um, uh, Elijah follows uh, the man of God and, and serves him for several years and he and he sees the power of God being demonstrated and he's learning and he's gleaning and also he is also serving and that's something that we have lost to teach the next generation how to serve. Uh, the, the, there, there is a problem. Uh, I'm going to say it again. What are we laying upon the next generation? What, what are we placing on them? What are they going to pick up? And, and the truth of the matter is when we see this and now I'm going to deal with a little bit just with the body of Christ. Uh, and when we see this in ministry, um, we see our leaders, the, the leaders that are around today. We see the entourage. We see this superstar things. And, 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 and you might say, am I having a go? Yes, I am. Because uh, I, I, I personally don't believe that reflects um, um, the, the plans of God. I personally don't believe that, that yes, God wants us blessed. Yes, I personally believe that God is no respecter of person. But when we have created superstars, there's only supposed to be one star, and that is the bright and morning star, Jesus Christ, the ultimate. And when we begin to place it on men and their giftings, we have missed the mark completely. And we are raising a generation, watch this, that 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 person believes to be a man of God, you have to have all these things, you have to have all these um um um, wealth things around you and that brings acceptancy and the truth of the matter that's not what validates you the bible says seek ye first 
The kingdom of God and all these things shall be added. So we have to first have what we call a relationship with God. And, and, and if you think about the things that we see uh, in the body of Christ, just as an example, and there are many that I could give you this morning. Uh, and, you know, a few weeks ago, I was watching something and I saw these, um, these preachers, him and his wife, and um, they had these thrones inside their church, and they were sitting on these thrones, and it it, it was it was so disturbing to me, uh, as in, it was so disturbing that I began to say, look at what we are doing, look at, at the body of Christ, look at the things that we actually see, watch this, and the things that we are demonstrating. Are we demonstrating uh, 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 um, um, what Jesus would demonstrate? Are we living how Jesus uh, 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 um, would actually live? And don't get me wrong. I am not saying that we shouldn't respect because the Bible tells us to respect. But God is no respecter of person. And what we have done, we have created, uh, 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 the, we, we've created things that, that, that I personally believe that God is not pleased with. We have created, watch this, even now in some churches, you might not have all the bling, you might not be that way inclined, you might not be of, you know, the the, 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 the faith boys or this camp, but then we have another camp, you know, where inside church, watch this, and, and, and again, I'm not uh, having a go, I'm not really um, 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 pointing, I should say, my finger at any individual. We have what we call substituted, uh, what I call the power of God, because we have not got the power of God. The truth of the matter, we've got methods of men. And so there has to be what I call a coming back of restoration to the very presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now we have, watch this, if you if you wear skinny jeans and a tight top, watch this and, and, and it is kind of flashing lights inside your church. And I'm not against that. Uh, but we have substituted that because now they're telling us, watch this, the media world, that that creates the right atmosphere for worship. No, there's nothing like the voice of God. There is nothing like the very presence of of the Lord because watch this we need the voice of God we need the very presence of God just like when Adam and Eve watch this when they sin they recognize the voice of God amen walking in the garden we need the very presence of God so there has to be a restoration and what's happening at the moment inside the body of Christ we have all these things that 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 does not reflect the kingdom of god the, the, one of the, the messages that jesus said was to go and to be light to be light and, and so god has called us to be light uh, in a dark world uh, and we're not of this world we're just passing up through and some of us are making residency like we're going to be here for for forever. But the truth of the matter is the light is the gospel. Amen. Demonstrated through the power of the spirit of the living God. And so what happens is if we're bearers of the light and we're not demonstrating the light, then we are what we call bad stewards, amen, of God's light. And so there needs to be what I call a refining, amen, and a going back to a place where we can be relit, restored back to the purpose of God. God. And I personally believe, watch this, that that's what God is doing so that we can go back to the place just like Elijah. God had to send him back because God hadn't finished yet because he said, you have to anoint some kings. You got, you got to, there's some, there's, there's some new kings. There's, there, there's a younger generation, this young prophet that's going to come up and he's going to take the mantle. And so what are you, we, amen, what are we leaving the next generation. Now Elisha, he was anointed. The man, he placed his mantle on his shoulders, meaning that there was a call. Elisha, his name means God is salvation. We know that, you know, we know that something was placed on him. Placed on him so that he could be effective 
to the next generation. He followed the man of God for several years, taught, seen the power. He was an assistant to Elijah. He proved himself to be faithful. We can see that he, was, he also he was uh, 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 he served him. We can see that how he washed his hands, and now we can see that he was there for it. And we can see that when God places through the, the prophet of God someone on his shoulder, he clings to the man of God. He clings to his leader. He clings. And when he hears that, you know, that he's going to be taken. He doesn't want to leave. And he asks him a question. He says, you know, when you're leaving, can, can I have a double portion of your spirit? He says, you, you ask an, an odd thing. When you, if you see me when I go, and, 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 and what was cast, he cast that mantle and he picked up that mantle. And my concern is, what are we going to cast into the next generation? What are you as an individual? We as the body of Christ, what are we leaving to the next generation? Because the baton that we pass on, they should be able to run with it and do more than what we do. They should be able to take it to a greater dimension, but they've got to see something and you've got to cast something. Watch this. You've got to cast something that has value, that has power in it. Not seven steps out to build a church. You have to cast power, anointings. And I personally believe that's why there has to be a restoration of the body of Christ, us as individuals, so that we can affect. Now we can see Elijah running under the Jupiter tree, in the cave, but then God recommissions him back. What did God do to get his attention? God just spoke and he recognized the voice of God. He said, my sheep knows my voice and a stranger they will not follow. He recognizes the voice of God that the man that was running is now going back to face the situation. To finish the task. Can't leave. The chariots can't come. Until he finishes. The chariots can't come. Until he finishes. The new prophet can't come. Until he places. Mantle on his shoulder. Cast the mantle so that he can pick it up and run. And he does more, Elijah does double than what his leader does. But he had to anoint the next generation, the next prophet. So touching the next generation is so important. And we can even see this through Jesus. Because Jesus came and he touched also his generation. He touched his generation. Watch this. And he cast something on them. The power of the Holy Spirit. Don't you leave Jerusalem until the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then he empowers you. And we can see that. And we can see that Jesus, watch this, empowers them through the Holy Spirit. But one of the things that we see, we see, watch this, the serving art of Jesus. 
And that's why I'm a bit frustrated when I see ministers today acting so out of line with what Jesus was. Jesus, the all-knowing one, the powerful one, the resurrection and the life, the miracle worker. And when we look at another example, we see Paul, the Apostle Paul, who's empowered to write a lot of the scriptures. And yet still he was a tent maker, yet still he knew how to serve and he knew how to be abound in many things and he knew how to be a base. And yet still, when we look at our leaders today, the picture they paint to the next generation, they say, you need all the trimmings to be. I am concerned. But let us look at Jesus. So you see, because when Jesus is our great example that touched the generation that he was in. Jesus came down to their level. He didn't expect them to come to his level. He came down. And you've got to understand that. And let's see that in first in, in, in Philippians, I should say, chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of his servant. Now, watch this. We could stop right there just for a moment and we can look around. Do our ministers represent that? Do, they, do we represent that or have we created the hierarchy system? I've heard, of, you know, especially us Pentecostals, you, we mock. I'm certain other denominations, whether it's the, the Roman Catholic Church, whether it's the, the, the Anglican Church with all their ceremonial things and this and that. But, but we're no better. We've created the same kind of hierarchy. We've created that system with inside of Pentecostal, whether, whether you're into the flashy stuff or whether you're into the skinny jeans or the whatever. We've created something, but instead of releasing and casting something on the generation that is behind us, the presence, the power, the anointings of God. So Jesus, we can see, you know, how he humbled himself. And yet still, if we think about it, Jesus had more power, more knowledge than anybody on the earth. And yet still, he didn't use his power to glorify himself in that sense. He used his power to serve the powerless. Those that were in darkness, the Bible said, watch this. When they beheld him, they saw great light. So he gave light. And the Bible then lets us know that we are the light of the earth. And if we are not using it to affect our generation, then we are bad stewards of the light. If you are not using what God has called you to do and to use and to be effective in your generation, then you are a bad steward of the light. Because God's called me and you, watch this, to affect our generation, but to also affect, also to teach our generation, watch this, that they need to be effective in their generation to affect those who have no power, no knowledge. Jesus uses the knowledge to reach those who were powerless. So what am I trying to say? What am I trying to say that that restoration has to take place in us as individuals? 
And then the Bible turns around and says that we are a lively stone building on what we call a spiritual house. A house of prayer, a house of power, a house of deliverance, a house of hope, a place of mercy, a place of grace. But what are we leaving to the next generation? What are we casting to them? Are we modeling like Jesus that, that what he did to his generation? Jesus wasn't expecting that generation to reach up to him, but he came down. And we can even see this, um, you know, with, with stories of the Bible, we can, we can see this, um, you know, when Jesus, you know, the woman caught in the adultery, in the act of adultery, how Jesus responded. We can see this when Jesus meets the woman at the well, how Jesus responded. Jesus never uh, 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 lectured anybody. The only people that he lectured were the, the, the Pharisees because they were just interested in power and, and knowledge, power. And, and, and what I'm trying to say that there has to be a, res a, a, a restoration of simplicity. How we touch our generation, how the world sees the church. And, 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 and in fact, we kind of isolated ourselves in our own little clubs and we all have them, whether you're the, the faith club, the, the charismatic the, or whatever, we all have them. And it's, we've lost purpose. And I personally believe that there has to be a restoration of those things, the simplicity, the grace of God, the love of God, the compassion of God. Us reaching out, us touching, us being the light of uh, the world, us being the salt of the earth. You can see it, watch this, even in, with this generation, they say that the, this generation, though they have been brought up inside church, a lot of them are leaving and a lot of us, a lot of us don't want to, we don't want to address that. You know, you might have 25 people, 25 young people inside your church or 30 or 200 or whatever. And we, you know, but the truth of the matter is young people, the, this generation that is coming up is leaving the church. Those that have been brought up in the church, nevertheless, those that don't know nothing about the church. Why? Why? Because they're not seeing the life of the Spirit. They're seeing our traditions. And because of our traditions, and we all have them, we've made the Word of God of none effect. And because we try to gain them with things like flashing lights and, and, and charisma in personalities, listen, that doesn't capture the soul. That doesn't change the heart. There has to be a demonstration of the Spirit of God. So there has to be what we call a restoration of the presence, and the power, the voice of God. The voice of God. You see, what's happened is the church has become so, so self-centered. It doesn't relate to this generation. It doesn't relate to this generation because we give them the those and the don'ts and do this and you've got to, that's what we do. It doesn't relate. And so when we look at Jesus as a great example, because like I said, because of this, the, Jesus, Jesus casts something down, the, the something released, it gives them power uh, uh, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We see that Jesus, how does Jesus do this? Now, to every generation, we've got to be, we've got to be wise. We've got to be creative. Yes, I believe in being creative. There's nothing wrong with being creative. But guess, let me tell you something. You have to be empowered by the Spirit of God. 
Because it's not by might nor by power, but it's by the spirit of the living God. We see, watch this, Jesus, by the, the Bible also lets us know that God takes the simple things of this world to confound the wise. And we can see the demonstration of Jesus and how Jesus right, ministered to his generation. Now, now watch this. Jesus ministered to his generation through using stories. He explained the presence and the power of God through, through, through stories and demonstrating of the power and the spirit of God. Now, we live in a generation, watch this, if we're going to be an effective, uh, 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 this is a sidetrack, if we're going to be effective, we have to be able to speak their language. We have to be able to, to be able to, come down to their level like Jesus came down instead of us coming up you've been you you've heard the saying inside inside churches or around the church world these young people of today and we they this and they that and whatever they don't want to hear that they want to be affirmed they wanted to they wanted to be lifted up into a place of hope and so we've got to communicate and I keep on saying this to a lot of people that I, I meet, especially in the church world. We have become so isolated. We have our own language. We use religious terms and, and Jesus could have used religious terms. He had more power, more knowledge, more ability in words, but he didn't. He came down and he communicated with simple stories and parables. And he explained them. Sometimes we go into certain churches and we have to have a dictionary. We use languages that the world don't understand. So I'm on the quest. I'm on this, 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 this movement. I'm on this, this trail and saying, God, I have to be effective. I to leave something on this next generation. I have to come to the place where I can communicate. Watch this. The gospel. The message never changes. The methods will change. The methods will change. And how we do it and the stuff and the language and what we use. That will so to relate to them. Because there's a generation, like I said, they don't understand when you're saying, I feel the spirit and the anointing of God and the Shekinah. Glory. And they don't understand that language. What does that mean to some of them if they've never been inside church? But God wants to restore me and you, the body of Christ, so that we can be effective to our generation. You know, years ago, Growing up, I used to, we used to have a telephone where you use your finger and you dial the number. Today, they don't do that. We don't use that method today. The method we use today, you know, we use a smartphone. We communicate or we text. We don't use that. So we have to be creative. But it takes what I call the presence of God. The presence of God is what we need. The voice of God is what we need. It's not flashing lights. It's not the message just of prosperity and those things. We need the presence of God where the voice of God is released and begins to bring changes and affects us so that we can be what I call an example to the next generation. I personally believe, watch this, Jesus wants me and you as believers to be restored back in the place of what I call love. Because you see, the Bible says that love uh, covers a, a multitude of sins. This generation that is coming up before us, watch this, needs to know that God loves them. 
They will struggle. But they need me and you to affirm them in love. They will. I know sometimes get on your nerves. But we have to be able to deposit something. And so my message this morning is that God wants me and you as a individual, watch this, to come to the place of complete restoration that we begin to evaluate the call of God upon our lives because God has not finished with you yet because God wants you, watch this, to leave a legacy and touch another generation that is coming up after you. That's why God didn't finish with, watch this, Elijah, yet. Go back and finish your assignment. There is an assignment for me and you to touch this next generation. This generation don't need lecturing. In fact, Jesus never lectured anybody other than the Pharisee because they wanted power and they were religious. But he came and he demonstrated love. You won't even find that an example of Jesus is being lecturing people on their sins. He loved them and embraced them, told them to go that way and sin no more and and people were messed up, but we see Jesus demonstrating light, love, grace, compassion. And the hearts of any human being desires to be loved, to be affirmed. I'm talking to you and me. God has not finished with you God wants you to be at the place where he's assigned because the Bible says that the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. So you cannot be like Elijah. Stay staying in the cave or staying under the Jupiter tree. God is saying, move from those places. Get back to what I've called you to do. Because God, watch this, wants to awaken me and you so that we can be used to affect the next generation. Elisha, anointed, for the next generation. He took over. The mantle. Fell upon him. The assignment was to bring back. People to the right place. Of worship. But we've got to cast something. So this next generation can pick up something. And run. And desire. God. Are the first thing the power of God. Elisha, please can I have a double portion? Based on what I see, I want a double portion of this anointing upon your life. Hallelujah. What is our generation saying? Do they want what we got? Or have we got something to give them? But I personally believe that God wants me and you that when we leave out of our place, this place, that we'll be able to cast something down so that the next generation can pick something up and do more than what we've done. Take the church world to a greater place. Effective, shaking nations where people will bow in repentance to God in such a way. Seeing the hand of God 
in the miraculous. Not this phony stuff, but the real genuine works of God. There's no phony preacher telling them you're going to get a car. But somebody that demonstrates the power and the character of God. So I encourage you, please be at the place. We'll get back to what I should say the place that God's assigned you so that you can finish your task because there's work for you to do so that you can leave a legacy and an empowerment to the next generation. God bless you and thank you for tuning in. I pray that over the last couple of weeks that these, these encouraging words will empower you because God has called you because he isn't finished with you yet. Despite of what you've gone through and feel like giving up, I am telling you it's time to arise and shine because God wants to use you. God wants you to complete the task. So God bless you and be in power. I just want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for over the last couple of weeks. And I pray, Heavenly Father, for those that have heard that faith and strength will come. I pray, Heavenly Father, that restoration, discovery, to recovery, to full restoration, will be begin to take place within our, our hearts. I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you just empower us in this season with your strength and with your mind. And I pray, God, that you'll bless those that have heard the preaching, teaching of this word. In Jesus' name, amen. You might not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Well, I want to let you know that whatever you've done in life, that he is a loving God. He's a good God. He didn't come in the world to condemn, but he came to save. He came to bring hope. He came to bring life. And if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, your life will be transformed. And God will use you in wherever he's called you. And this life, not to say that you won't have problems, but guess what? You can walk through the storms knowing that the God of heaven is on your side. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep you. And there's a joy and a satisfaction knowing that you have life. If you want to experience, there's so much more I could tell you. But if you want to experience, the sign goes, oh taste and see that the Lord is good. Why don't you try Jesus? And that simply means that you acknowledge him as Lord and Savior. Ask him to forgive you and he will. And he'll come into your life and begin to develop your Christian walk, your relationship with him day by day. And if that's you, I want you to simply say this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you and I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to cleanse me. I acknowledge that you, Jesus, are the son of the living God. And here I am. I give you my life in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you've said that prayer, I'd love you to connect with us. Our emails will come up and now you can connect with us. We want to send you some information on how you can, you know, uh, um, out so that we can help you strengthen this, this new way of life and help you. And if you're outside of the Derby area, still connect with us. We can help you to find a church. And we personally believe that you should be uh, um, um, inside a church, be connected to a church, you know, 
um, where your pastor can pray for you, lay hands on you and, and counsel you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we personally believe in that. So, you know, connect with us. And, uh, and if you like I said, if you're outside of the Derby area, we'll help you to find a church wherever you are, wherever you are in the world, we will be able to help you. But if you're in Derby, you're more than welcome to all nations for Christ. We personally believe that, amen, the presence of the Lord is amongst us and that makes a difference. So come and join with us. The information will come up on the screen. Connect with us and God will truly keep you and bless you. Well, at this moment in time, it's a time where we can donate to the ministry, where we can give to God because God, you know, he's been faithful uh, 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 and the Bible encourages us to give. And I'm encouraging you this morning that you will you know, you will donate to the ministry because we personally believe that there's many things that we believe that God's called us to do. And without you helping us financially, uh, we can't do the things that God's um, called us to do. And the Bible lets us know that God loves a cheerful giver. I can't tell you the amount to give, but I personally know that God will bless you. And for those that are connected to ANFC, your tithe payers, we personally believe, amen, that in tithing. So we encourage you um, to tithe as God has blessed you. Uh, uh, I want to pray just before um, you donate. The information will come up on the screens, all our banking details, uh, and God will truly bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people. I thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, that your word is declared that you love a cheerful giver. And Father, we know that, Heavenly Father, that you said you will provide all our needs. We cannot buy it with money, but we know, God, that, Lord, as an act of faith and giving, we're putting our trust in you, and we're just saying thank you for giving us the strength, the ability to give back to you. And I pray, God, that you'll bless your people. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll empower their lives, you'll bless their families, and you'll cause your goodness to overshadow their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the information will come up on the screen on how you can do donate. I want to tell you thanks and God bless you and see you soon. You can donate to ANFC Church in your local currency quickly and securely by our website or direct bank transfer. You can also make quick and secure donations through our website by visiting www anfc.org.uk forward slash donate All you have to do is select the transaction partner you would like to use Tithely or PayPal and then follow the instructions on screen to complete your transaction Want to set up a recurring gift? You can do this and set the frequency during the process of your transaction Want to pay by bank transfer or set up a standing order? You can also find these details on our website to set up your transaction. Sort code 601517 Account number 8510145 Thank you for your generosity and God bless you.